put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. Avengers Age of Ultron 3D Mood Review Following the events of the first movie as well as Captain America Winter Soldier the Avengers have been busy. They have been working on finding Loki's scepter and if you watched Winter Soldier and stayed through the credits you may have an idea of where it is and basically yeah the the first scene of this is them finding it and Tony realizes that he can some of what Colonel Strucker was working on might be useful and he works on the AI Ultron to basically yeah to to defend Earth. I think he he describes it as something like if if something else you know attacks from outer space will have a doorman you know some a bouncer I think is yeah you know so that it's not you know right at the edge of you know because they only just barely made it in Avengers and yeah it's it's you know a it's a comic book so the AI of course you know goes homicidal goes all Skynet and yeah basically it's determined to exterminate the human race and this is such you would not expect that to really work it, it feels it's you know we've seen it before but the movie is just so self-aware that it just has so much fun with these things and yeah doesn't take itself too seriously whilst at the same time being very dramatic very effective so yeah and you get it you Ultron Ultron likes to talk so he will happily explain the you know his his motivation and it makes sense you know that actually there is a point where literally like I think it's Tony asks Ultron you know what you know something like you know what what uh, what are you gonna do something like that and Ultron literally responds Oh, it's, this is great. I was just hoping that I could have one of those big speeches where the villain reveals the entire plan to the good guys, you know. So, yeah, the, the movie's well aware of the, yeah. And, yeah. So, this does make it another movie where it's Tony's mistake that causes the problem, which pretty much means you know Avengers 1 is the only one where it wasn't his fault so yeah and the you know and of course it was always Tony Stark who you know he helped create Ultron it's not that you know the MCU hasn't gotten an Ant-Man movie out in time <clears throat> Now, the the trailers show a lot, and I was kind of worried that they maybe gave too much away. They did not. Trust me, there is plenty that you do not see in the trailers, and yeah, there there are you know the trailers give away a lot of the the you know nice little action moments. There are plenty that they did not give away. It yeah. If you're if you're just if you're on the fence about this movie, if you if if you can at all imagine watching this and you just need that one little push, the scene in which the Hulk fights Iron Man the Hulkbuster suit 
is worth the price of admission. Trust me on that. And thank me later. Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. There, there are so many tiny little moments just in that fight. And just the the detail, the creativity. Yeah. So so yeah. Ultron is you know voiced and as far as I understand also the physical performance by James Spader in one of his few non-perv roles. But he is still creepy like you wouldn't believe. He's this really immature and self-absorbed thing. Basically, he is wildly unstable. Like there's, you know, fairly early on, someone like compares him. But yeah, he compares he compares him to Tony. And that just that is not okay. That is not okay. And he just flips. And he's he's incredibly deadly and incredibly powerful and he can't quite handle that all the time he like you know after he does he's like oh no, I'm sorry but just don't compare me to Tony okay it's just yeah really and the you know the the he's, he's also he's been described as kind of the, the Frankenstein you know creating this yeah, toying with things that shouldn't. Yeah, there's there's very much that element to him, and yeah, just this really psychotic. Yeah, he's he's freaking terrifying, absolutely. Now, and there's also there's a bit of a terrorist thing to him. You know, he. Yeah, he he genuinely he attacks. Just, you know, yeah, sometimes just to scare. And, yeah, it's it's a lot like, you know, Joker or Mandarin. Yeah. And he's also, he's actually a genuinely memorable and fun villain. So, you know, add him to the ranks of really, you know, of, of the MCU's really, really fun and memorable villains, you know, next to Loki and Loki and the, you know, yeah, you you see the you see the robot army some in the yeah it's yeah and and he does control that purely by will. There's not like any kind of yeah he he can tell them all what to do at any time. And, you know, you know, he can fly, he's stronger and faster than men, and, yeah. Now, the, 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 the twins, the, I heard they were going to be referred to as miracles. In this, they're called something like... Crap, I don't remember exactly, but but something like they've been upgraded, something, you know. Obviously, not not the M word. Don't worry. You know what is it? Fox, I guess, who has the rights. Yeah. But but yeah, the Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch are you know from this Eastern European country, and they have a beef with the Avengers. Let's let's put it that way and the heh, the implied incest yeah there's 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 implied incest i think i think i'm just going to leave it at that and the there there is whether whether one you know whether one thinks that the incest is more than an implication or not, they do really, they, you know, all they have is each other. And especially Quicksilver is really protective of Scarlet Witch. And, you know, in part, Just Whedon chose them because they would have these cool and more visual powers. Where he, he referred to as the, in the first Avengers movie, everyone had punchy powers. And, yeah, it, they, 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 Excuse me. They change up the action, and 
yeah, it helps make the action more creative and just, yeah, it, it it's used really, really well. There are some just really great gags with the speed. There, there's this running, there's this running thing of, didn't you see that coming? That, yeah, and the, but, but yeah, you know, very creative action, very varied, you know, chases vehicular on foot, fights with both, you know, the, the weapons and just hand to hand, you know, it's easy to follow, it's, it's not excessive or repetitive, and, you know, there's, there's set up and payoff, nothing feels, you know, it, it all feels earned. Nothing is just, like, cheap or... There's, there's fan service in the film, definitely, but it all works. No, nothing feels like a cheat. And the... And, and we have more... I already mentioned the Hulkbuster suit, so yeah, we have more cool Iron Man suit stuff. And, yeah. And the there's really nothing. Yeah, never mind. I shouldn't keep you into that. But yeah, basically, you know, our heroes they they look you know they they are heroic. They look badass, but you always feel like it could go wrong. They could lose. You know, it it is. Yeah, it doesn't feel like they're just shrugging all of this stuff off. There, there's tension in the action scenes. Now, where the first Avengers had the one villain letting, you know, letting the focus be on the team, since it was, you know, these these had the the members had had their individual origin stories, except, you know. Scarlet Witch and Hawkeye, but yeah, it was the origin story of the team. So yeah, and now that we've had the origin story for the team, we we know all the the members and such. You know, there can be bigger stuff with the characters on both sides, and yeah, you know, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. They're, you know, they are actual characters in there. They they aren't just like foot soldiers or something they yeah they they have allegiances and they you know they fight but they may change who they fight for and it makes sense you know whoever they are fighting for at any time it makes perfect sense you know you you follow that you know it's it's not this kind of thing of okay well now so and so much this time or now okay we're in the third act you know people should you know every every powered person get on the one team now something you no know, there's and there's great yeah the the quicksilver gets to Yeah, there's he's he does some fun stuff with trying to fight some of the Avengers and just yeah, it it doesn't always work out quite as expected, but yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. Now the you know, where the the Quicksilver of the Avenger the the X-Men movie, rather, Days of Future Past you know, he, you know, he had no patience, he was adventurous, he, he was kind of a petty thief, having stolen, like, you know, Pong machine and ping pong table and stuff, you know, he was, he was a lot of fun, and I, yeah, that, you know, that was a great characterization, great performance as well. This Quicksilver, there is some of that, some of those same traits. There's there's a definite lack of patience. There's like I, 
I don't remember who it was that, that said it, but there's a quote about, you know how it is when you're, you know, in line behind, you know, behind the ATM, you're in line at the ATM, and, you know, you're just impatiently waiting for everyone else to, you know, get done with the, you know, so you can get there, and for Quicksilver, it's like nobody else knows how to work the ATM, so he's just, you know, come on, just, you know, let me add it so I can, yeah, and the, you know, like I mentioned, he's very protective of Scarlet Witch, and yeah, he's he's a bit arrogant and such. Overall, I do prefer this Quicksilver to the the X Men one. I gotta say, part of it is that he's actually integral to the plot here. He's not just there for one scene and could have been written out if that scene didn't. Yeah, that. That Quicksilver remains a ton of fun, and I look forward to more with him, but yeah, this Quicksilver has great gags as well, and yeah, he actually, yeah, he's he's part of the overall movie, but yeah, there, there are a ton of really fun gags where there's, there's a part where someone is about to shoot someone else. And Quicksilver doesn't want that. So basically, you know, he, he rushes in. We doesn't we don't see exactly what he does, but after he's done it, the the clip is on a desk. On on the desk right by the guy with the gun. And next to it, every single bullet. The last one even like wobbles a little. Because, you know, Quicks were literally just placed it there and ran back, you know, and so, yeah, okay, go ahead, try to shoot. Is yeah, a, a lot of fun, and, yeah. Now, the, yeah, and they, they filmed some of the action scenes involving Quicksilver with this ultra-high-speed camera, and then they filmed him running in, you know, in, in, at regular speed, and combined them, and, yeah, it, it looks great. Now, the accent did bother me a little bit. It's, it's not terribly overdone. You, you hear it in one of the trailers. It's, it's really not, it's just, I don't know, a little bit. It's it's that thing whenever someone who's not Eastern European tries doing an Eastern European accent, it is a little bit doesn't sound quite the way it's yeah. Now and yeah, he's you know, he has a short temper, he tends to rush in and you know, the Scarlet Witch has telekinesis and, you know, she can, like, go in and psychologically mess with people's minds. She has other powers, but I'm not sure they were that used, excuse me, all that much in this. And I mostly saw the telekinesis. And, yeah, but meanwhile, when she, you know, mentally messes with someone... Those scenes are right out of, like, a truly horrifying psychological thriller. Like, you know, I mean, she basically awakens their worst fear. And, yeah, it's, it's nightmare fuel. It's, it's, yeah. And, and that is, of course, also where some of the, you know, some have noted the extended cast, you know, the supporting casts you know, in this, of of the different characters in this, those appear in the, you know, in these scenes and not necessarily outside of them. Now, 
and the the Avengers don't always get along in this one. There's some, yeah, there there are some arguments between the the various ones. Let's let's go with that. And I suppose that, like with the first Avengers. Each of the members have their own sort of conflict that, you know, and interesting interpersonal, interpersonal relationships with the other members. You know, Tony is still really driven by this, you know, like, like we see in Iron Man 3. What happened in New York really messed him up. He does not want to risk something like that happening ever again and yeah that's you know and then once Ultron happens he you know true you know has to try to deal with that you know Cap is just trying to figure out you know where does he belong in the world and can he really Yeah, can can he be comfortable if not engaged in battle? And Thor the I suppose Thor's I'm not sure if the Yeah, actually I'm not sure I should say too much about his actually uh, at least and I definitely will not give Hawkeyes away, but took me by surprise, definitely, definitely a surprise. And the I suppose that covers yes, that leaves Hulk, Bruce, and Nat Natasha. Black Widow, they're together, and basically, she she calms him down once he has, you know, hulked out for some, you know, yeah, and he can somewhat control, you know, his actions as the Hulk. It's you know, we, we understand it more than in the first one. And like in the first one, when you see the Hulk in this, something big is going to happen. You know, the Hulk does not stand around in this. Same same as in the first one. If, yeah, if, if he turns or if he shows up, yeah, something's going to get destroyed. And, yeah, and basically, yeah, she, she can calm him down, and he's basically been, you know, still been on the team, you know, in Avengers, he was hired because he could help out with the, the gamma radiation, you know, because he knows it better than anyone else. He stayed on the team after that, in part also for the Hulk. He's not necessarily entirely happy with that. He does not like having the Hulk. And he doesn't like having, like, after the first major action scene, which, again, is literally the opening of the film. Actually, I might not have said that. But yeah, the, 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 the opening of the film is in the middle of a big fight. So that's, that's really cool. Anyway, yeah, after that big action scene, you know, and he calms down and he talks with Natasha and he you know they they talk about you know going green with you know like green for go red for stop and go green it's it's not about organic food in this instance at least and yeah he's like you know like i wasn't expecting to you know it's it's a it's 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 hard for him 
and he's trying to, you know, he wants to help, but there is this just, yeah, he's, he's not happy with the Hulk. He's just, you know, he's willing, but yeah. And they're actually very nice together. And not long after that, you know, big fight, there's actually, you know, you see a little bit of this in some of the trailers. There's kind of a party at the, the Avengers Tower. And, you know, every, every member shows up and, you know, mingles and just, excuse me, yeah, the War Machine and Falcon are not in this very much, but, you know, they, they are, they are there at the party and maybe they'll show up at some point in the course of the film and... Yeah, it's basically, yeah, they're just, they're going around and just everything they say is, is really, I, I should say, this is an incredibly fast-paced movie. And not, not fast-paced to where it gets too much. You're, you're always there, but just the, the dialogue, the action, the, the character moments, both, you know, Establishing characters, developing characters, you know, character interaction, all these things so fast. And the, the movie is just, there are so many funny lines. And just, it, I don't think, I don't think there was any time where more than 10 minutes, and usually it wasn't more than five, went by without the whole crowd, you know, packed theater roared with laughter. It was it's such a funny movie and again it really you know you see some of some things in this that are really you know you really do have to completely be there. You have to really suspend your disbelief to you know you know the superhero stuff. It's otherwise it can be difficult to take seriously and it's important then that it has a sense of humor about itself, and this very much does. There's, again, something you've you've seen clips from is them trying to lift the hammer, and there are so many nice little touches there that just, yeah, and the, yeah, I just, yeah, even. Even if you look at this purely just from character standpoint, you know, characters interact, interacting with each other and how, you know, how much nuance is there to each character, even for that. Yeah, if, you know, again, if you're looking for an excuse to watch this and you really dig character, you know, character heavy stuff, yeah, definitely watch this also on the characters they all face off against they they all do something very important in the fight against Ultron much like in the first one every member is really important to the the, the outcome and in this they split up a lot and have to deal with different you know this more than the first you know the first one you know they were just building towards them even being able to work together and in this right from the start they do so the movie uses that really well the you know right from the start there are some big action set pieces and along the way, even if, you know, just one or two characters have figured something out, maybe they go try that and some others are working on something else or, you know, various things. It, it uses that really well. There's a... It's very unpredictable. You, you can't tell when there's going to be a big action scene or, you know, how something is going to turn out. 
now. And the, you know, this really sees the relationship between Tony and Bruce grow and, yeah, you know, the, 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 the science bros, you know, they, yeah, and, and it's especially, you know, it's especially Bruce that also hears this about, you know, the, the AI, you know, Tony, Tony likes to work alone. He doesn't really want to, you know, talk too much with about it with the others. But Bruce, you know, they <laughs> like like in the Avengers, they they speak English. You know, they both speak English. So now I suppose yes, the you know, just we can talk about continuity wise he wanted this to be something that people could go into blind I was worried that if that were true that the movie couldn't be complex as complex as otherwise I had to hand it to him he he balanced that incredibly well you you can basically go into this blind. You you don't have to know anything about any of these characters. You can still go into the movie. You'll be able to follow it fine. And you might want to watch it more than once to to fully absorb all the different. You know, if, if you're meeting all these characters for the first time, it's a lot to take in. But you can. It's all there in the movie. It it you see what everyone can do and you yeah you see how they interact you hear about what they talk about with other things you know yeah it it all just yeah and and there are some very new things in the film that you know like Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch the movie doesn't sit down and spend a lot of time explaining them but again we see them and we yeah, it, it's it's really good at just conveying this, yeah, establishing the characters, you know, using these characters, and, you know, the, the powers, really, like, the, and, and the movie also kind of acknowledges that the, you know, when, that, that the, some of these characters can be a bit, much to take in when Maria Hill, I believe is her name, when she explains to Captain America, <laughs> you know, when when they first encountered Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, she has intel on them, and she explains the whole thing, and Cap is like, eh, um, is not not entirely getting, and and she. You know, she she dumbs it down a shade. He's fast, she's weird. So that is, yeah. Now the and the the various relationship stuff, the the things that have happened in between movies, it all. I mean, I mentioned that you you'll know, you know, you, you'll have seen Colonel Strucker before watching this movie, if you watched Captain America Winter Soldier and saw the, you know, was the, I think the mid credit scene, not the post. Yeah, you know, that, that helps establish that, but, you know, yeah, a, a lot of things have happened in between the movies and it kind of, you know, I've, I've watched every single one of these movies and, you know, know the details and such. There was still a lot of stuff that I, you know, I didn't know would be in this movie before it actually happened. And it makes sense and it works. It's just, 
yeah it's still there's there's a bit to you you have to process and such but it it works it just it makes sense and you buy it and then once it's been established then the movie doesn't have to spend a lot of time yeah it just it it moves really really fast from start to finish it's you know <laughs> Even with the the length of the film, it's amazing how much is in the film. I, Joss Whedon, you are the man at this stuff. Seriously. Now, something that's a really good element of this is that this is not taking place only in New York City. You know, they filmed all over the world. You know, like. Italy, South Korea, the UK, South Africa, I believe, in fact, in Johannesburg, because Neil Blomkamp has made it clear that they do have some problems with AI down there. And, yeah, you really get a sense that Ultron, he's a threat to the world. It's not just like, it's not, you know, New York. He's He can attack anywhere. And... Yeah, and, and that is also some, you know, suddenly they realize, okay, he's over here, we have to go over there, you know, and, yeah, and it, it does that really well. I was, I was worried that it would have too many settings and just rush by some of them, but it just, yeah, it, it, it works. It has a, Yeah, just it, the, the the movie spends exactly the right amount of time on pretty much everything, and yeah, and and uses these various settings well to kind of the there's this Eastern European country that is basically the main you know or an an important setting at least, and that is a very I'm pretty sure it's fictitious, but it feels real. It it feels like, yeah, and and it looks very Eastern European. You know, it's it's war torn, and there are a lot of poor people, a lot of desperate people, and yeah, you, and and that's also something I really like. This and the the first movie, the first Avengers you really see the heroes protect you know civilians and such so that yeah and yeah and and when you know just Whedon said of this that it doesn't necessarily go bigger but it goes deeper and becomes more personal and that is very very true and like the trailers show the the movie does have a few of the 360 you know hero shots where we see the whole group you know excuse me in, in one place or attacking all at once and such and those excuse me sometimes get a little fan service -y, but they're you know yeah there's, there's some really badass stuff in this and I, I also feel like it's it's very well spread out over the various characters. They all really get to show off what they can do and, yeah, you know, get to, yeah, really make an impact now. And given that I've said that the Hulk Buster suit is in this it stands to reason that there is there is a Hulk that must be busted so not only is the Hulk in this he goes pretty berserk and yeah that's 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 an amazing scene we've seen the Hulk go berserk a number of times, even even just in these recent films. But this is, for my money, the best.
and I, I still rather like The Incredible Hulk, so, yeah. Now, Stan Lee said that this is one of his favorite cameos. I can see why, and I think you will too. Now, the after you've watched this, and you will watch it, there is a mid credit scene, there is not a post credit scene. I, I, I had heard there wouldn't be, I still sat, I, I think most of them had, had left. It was only the hardcore nerds who stayed behind. It was maybe 10% of, of the theater left. There was an audible groan when there was no post credit scene. And as I walked out, I passed someone who was flipping out over it. Like, and I quote, I want my shawarma. Yeah. And, yeah, so, you know, obviously going into the 3D, it's pretty good. There are times where it really feels like you're there and such. It wasn't used all that much, and yeah, you know, if if it's like take or leave, it, if you're like thinking, eh, do I really have to go for the extra money for the 3D? You don't really. I you you're not missing that much if you don't. Now, the CGI is fantastic, absolutely seamless. You really like. If I were to, like, just try to logically think, okay, that is probably CGI, and that's still practical, then I probably could. But just watching the movie, I, I can't see where it is. And it, yeah, and, and it still really does, you, you know, yeah, and it has them do amazing things through the, the CGI. And... The practical stuff is also bad. Like, there are some insane fights in this. In, like, just... Yeah. Now... And this, you know, I already mentioned that it's easy enough to follow. The camera doesn't, like, shake excessively. It's not cut too fast or anything. It's just yeah there there's no point in this where it's like diff, you know straining to watch or something like that it always just yeah now i had worried that this would you know have the x men problem and have too many too powerful characters you know, so that what the X-Men movies, what, what the first two did, and what the rest kind of failed to do, and thus just seemed kind of strange, is that they had to cancel out abilities or force people to pair off or something because they can't, or there's not room for all of them to use all of their abilities all at once. And in this, it just, it works, and it, it just, just makes it look easy somehow. It just, yeah, he, he balances all of these very different, you know, many of them very powerful characters, and yeah, there's, yeah. And the... And we have strong female characters, and we don't really see, you know, I always hate when, when you have strong female characters, and then you have to have something, you know, take away their, you know, yeah, take away from them being strong. That doesn't really happen in this. The, yeah. And actually, I think pretty much every major female character is a strong one. Yes, I, I would say so. And that includes 
some that are not in it that much and that you wouldn't necessarily think there's this what what geneticist or something who works with Stark and like she does not care that she's in the middle of you know she's she's surrounded by these incredibly powerful people she has a a snarky line for every single one of them there's just nothing that just yeah you know you you'd think you know us it's it's not unusual to be intimidated by in, intimidated by you know the one of the world's most brilliant minds you know Thor and you know the man who becomes the Hulk nope she she shrugs it off it's just I, th I think it's something that happens when you work with Tony you 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 develop kind of you you have to be able to take a bit if if you're gonna work for him. The, I would say this is the best in the series, and yeah, the so so yeah the 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 best MCU movie thus far, and yeah, and and you know to to an extent I'd say that they I think pretty much from from Avengers and onwards the first Avengers and onwards they're all really really good but both of both Avengers movies are amazing Captain America the Winter Soldier is amazing Guardians of the Galaxy I'm still trying to make up my mind about that. I'm I like it a a whole lot I there are parts of it I love I'm not quite sure it's on the same level as these three, but but yeah, Thor: The Dark World. I like a lot about you, but overall, it's just not quite. It's, it's still, in most ways, a better movie than Thor One, and I still like Thor One. I I maintain that the only bad movie in the MCU is Iron Man Two. And I think it, it was probably a good idea to get the bad one out of the way, you know, very early, so that, you know, so, so that we're not waiting for, oh, at some point there's going to be the bad, nope, just get it out of the way early. And now, you know, if if someone, you know, someone tries to troll you and say, ah, oh, you love all the MCU movies, you can easily say, nope, don't love Iron Man 2, so, yeah, but... Yeah, the the you know from Avengers and onwards, they're all really really good and just not all of them equally. But but yes, this this is the best and and this is again where I have to explain. This is not me saying that the first Avengers was not you know could have been better or the like. The first Avengers did exactly what it had to do. It had to bring together all of these characters it had to kind of yeah have have these characters in the same in in the same room and have them bounce off each other and just get the the stuff you know some of them are really going to butt heads and some of them are really going to get along and you want to do all that and the first movie did that and did it really well and this one uses that that was already done really well really well and yeah just this movie's amazing I think that is about what I was going to say in the yeah it yeah just go watch it if you already watched it, go watch it again. I've reviewed other parts of this franchise. The links are in the description box. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.